hello. So, I have been discussing about on the topic that is understanding group dynamics. This is part 2. In part 1, I have discussed little bit about the uh, formation stages of forming the groups and about the process of formation of group etcetera and the basic definition of group dynamics that I have discussed in part 1. Uh, in part 2, I am going to discuss further related to group dynamics, uh, some of the points which are very, very important uh, which one can uh, note for further understanding. Uh, here I would like to discuss a little bit on the types of groups. Groups are, are, of, are of different types. So, groups can be divided into two parts, uh, one is called formal and another one is called informal. While formal groups are established by an organization to achieve its goal, informal groups merge spontaneously. Formal groups may take the form of and generally these are the three forms like what we call command groups, task groups and functional groups. So, one by one I will take up and discuss about these kind of uh, types of groups. So, first one is command group. Command groups are specified by the organizational chart and often consist of a supervisor and the subordinates that report to that supervisor. An example of a command group is a market research from CEO, for, sorry, a market research firm CEO and the research associates under him or her. So, this is called the command group, means they have been given certain type of task to be performed and there is a person responsible for that and he has his or her associates and they are supposed to perform. So, this is called command group. Other one is called task group. What is task group? The task groups consist of people who work together to achieve a common task. Members are brought together to accomplish a narrow range of goals within a specified time period. Task groups are also commonly referred to as task forces. The organization appoints members and assigns the goals and tasks to be accomplished. So, this group is very active some tasks have been assigned to them and they are supposed to perform within a, a given time limit. Examples of assigned tasks are the development of a new product. This is very, very challenging task given. Task force also sometimes we will say the improvement of a production process or designing the syllabus under semester system. So, lots of you know critical thinking required, uh, lots of new ideas are required they have to face lots of challenges, it is not that easy. A task force is such a force or group we, who are supposed to take up the challenges and once a person is taking up the challenge, definitely it is not easy to perform. One has to work hard, collect lots of information from various sources, take the help of others, junior, senior, subordinates, everybody, whosoever might be having information and can be helpful. So, uh, to achieve the goal. Other common task groups are ad hoc committees, project groups and standing committees. Ad hoc committees are temporary groups created to resolve a specific complaint. Sometimes in organizations some dis disciplinary committees are formed and it is uh, uh, some members, three, four members form a group to look into the matter. And these things are not very simple, quite, uh, quite complicated and based on their experience knowledge and wisdom, they have to come up with some sort of decision. So, task group is a group who are given some assignment within a given time and they have to perform. Now, another group named that is called functional group. What are func functional groups? A functional group is created by the organization to accomplish specific goals within an unspecified time frame. Now, time is not specified. Functional groups remain in existence after achievement of current goals and objectives. Examples of functional groups would be a marketing department, a customer service department or an accounting department. So, like these are the functional groups. 
in any organization there is establishment department there is accounts department uh, uh, there is uh, some some sort of you know other kind of departments marketing extra so these uh, departments or in other words one can say that group of people keep on working to perform certain type of task assigned or given to them so uh, these kind of groups that which are called functional groups uh, they keep on working means there is no uh, time frame that uh, uh, specified time that they have to perform within this particular time frame certain tasks so uh, these groups uh, are uh, keep on working continuously and uh, um, they have certain uh, work to be performed and uh, that is their function now further informal groups can have a strong influence in organization that can either be positive or negative for example employees who form an informal group can either discuss how to improve a production process or how to create shortcuts that jeopardize quality informal groups can take the form of interest groups friendship group or reference group so just we as i uh, mentioned earlier some of the groups which are very very important uh, they come under the category or formal group but at the same time you know that many people are working for certain thing certain cause for certain cause informally and there is also they form a group they work together in a group informally and uh, in informal group also there might be lots of you know sub categories based on the purpose and they are called like interest group friendship group or reference group so i shall be discussing little bit on these groups now first one is interest group now people are having common interest they form a group interest group usually continue over time and may last longer than general informal groups members of interest groups may not be part of the same organizational department but they are bound together by some other common interest when people are having common interest naturally they will come together they form the group that's why we find that some people if they have certain liking for certain thing might be sports and games we see that some people sit together and play cards some people are playing carrom boards some people are going together for walking and uh, chit chatting some people are uh, like minded people are just sitting together and uh, uh, cutting jokes and just laughing so like that means some common interest should be there so that is called interest group they form because they have some common interest and this is very interesting uh, that people will automatically will come together the goal and objective of group interests are specific to each group and may not be related to organizational goals they have nothing to do with the organizational goal an example of an interest group would be students who come together to form a study group for a specific class sometimes you know uh, some people maybe also in some organization some department educational institutions some like minded people because of their vested interest they have common interest they come together and form a group to do something uh, some students also as it is mentioned here form a group to study together and if they are coming together uh, they they discuss together then they definitely can perform better than other students so working in a group of course helps provided if they have a common interest so common interest group uh, is there and uh, it's a uh, very very useful and purposeful another group might be just friendship group some friends like uh, minded people come together so friendship groups are formed by members who enjoy similar social activities political beliefs religious values or other common bonds members enjoy each other's company and often meet after work to participate in these activities that means uh, friendship group uh, become uh, people become friend because uh, they like something their liking might be something common uh, in each other uh these are some examples uh, mentioned like some people are having some political beliefs they 
have faith or belief in some particular party for example. So, they will come together or lots of people come together because of their religious faith. Uh, you know religion is such a thing that uh, people become very uh, sensitive and uh, very uh, easily they come together based on this faith. So, they will form a group and they will sit together, discuss together, having discourses, inviting uh, knowledgeable persons, in, inviting some uh, preachers in that particular area of religion or sect who can further enhance their knowledge. So, they have some common interest and because of that they develop some sort of friendship. So, this is called friendship group and uh, so for example, other friendship groups might be like uh, employees who form a friendship group may uh, have a yoga group. Some people you know uh, doing individually yoga and then doing in a group, uh, it is a two different uh, cases because when, a, when people are uh, doing yoga in a group perhaps they get lots of inspiration from each other and uh, every day they are meeting some particular place and uh, performing some yogic exercises. So, this, this is yoga group, they become friend and similarly sometimes you know certain organizations like association like Telugu association in Kolkata like that in many states people from coming from some other state, uh, they form some friendship group where in, in the weekend uh, they have some social or cultural program, they sit together discuss. Because you know that language and food is such a thing that generally uh, uh, bring, uh, generally people come together very uh, in a natural way. So, uh, these kind of you know friendship groups are very common everywhere and uh, some sometimes you know in some organizations and where families are staying together, some ladies form this kitty party and uh, in a week or in a month they sit together somewhere and chit chat and just uh, laugh and enjoy party. So, this is called friendship group and these all are informal nothing to do with some particular organization to do. Another very interesting group is reference group. A reference group is a type of group that people use to evaluate themselves. The main objective of reference groups are to seek social validation and social comparisons. Social validation allows individuals to justify their attitudes and values while social comparison helps individuals evaluate their own actions by comparing themselves to others. So, people keep comparing with others what they are doing, what others are doing, how they can do better, how they can achieve certain things, what can they do for the for their society, for their community. So, all such things are discussed here. Reference groups have a strong influence on members behavior. Such groups are formed voluntarily from family, friends and religious affiliations are strong reference groups for most individuals. So, family friends and religious affiliations. So, of course, there are people who are common friends. So, they come together and uh, uh, they form a group which is called a reference group. Now, further uh, factors affecting group behavior. So, I would like to discuss little bit that what are the factors generally one has to be aware of which will affect the group behavior. The success or failure of a group depends upon many factors, but these are some of the important factors. First one is group member resources. That means, it consists of a structure, size of the group, group roles, group norms and group cohesiveness. So, this is very, very important. Other one is group process like the communication process, how people are communicating, group decision making process, power dynamics, who is having what kind of power in that group and then conflicting interactions amongst the group members. And the other one is group tasks that is complexity and interdependence. So, these are the group behaviors. Now, starting with first one that is group member process, the members knowledge, abilities, skills and personality characteristics. So, that is sociability, self reliance and independence are the resources the group members bring in 
with them, the success depends upon these resources as useful to the task. So, these are the useful resources, knowledge. Now, some people are having good knowledge uh, in the group, definitely that will help. Experience help. Experienced people always are very important in a group. They can share. And with their knowledge, with their experience, the group can be benefited. So, these things are quite important. Now, so far the structure of the group, there are two things, group size uh, and group role. So, group size can vary from two people to a very large number of people, means uh, there is no as such uh, limit uh, restriction related to the number of uh, persons in a group, number of members of a group, how many members should be in a group, just two or more can form a group. But it is advisable that smaller groups are better, will perform better, because chances of differences, chances of conflicts will be less in small groups. So, a small group of 2 to 10 are thought to be more effective because each member has ample opportunity to take part and engage activity in the group. Large groups may waste time by deciding on process and trying to decide who should participate. Next, if the group is very large, then as I mentioned that uh, there is quite possible that everybody will be having his or her opinion and then differences and then liking, disliking. So, chances of uh, conflicts will be more. So, it is always good to manage the smaller groups and assign certain responsibility, certain tasks to them. So, it becomes easier. So, size of the group also, man, also matters. Uh, as one can also understand that if there are uh, large number of people who have been given the responsibility, because it is said that uh, shared responsibility is nobody's responsibility. So, if uh, it is becoming very, very large, then also it is not good. Second one is group roles. In formal groups, roles are always predetermined and assigned to the members. Each members are given certain kind of role to perform. Each role shall have specific responsibilities and duties. There are however, emergent roles that develop naturally to meet the needs of the groups. So, depending on the nature, behavior, knowledge, experience of the people, if they are assigned the proper task to be performed, to be uh, done, then definitely it is going to be very effective. So, this one has to take care that the right person is given the right kind of responsibility. Then group norms, norms define the acceptable standards or boundaries of acceptable and unacceptable behavior shared by group members. They are typically created in order to facilitate group survival, make behavior more predictable, avoid embracing situation and express the values of the group. So, group norms are very much acceptable standard or boundaries of acceptable and acceptable behaviors. What are the norms should be in the groups, acceptable, not acceptable. It should be discussed. It should not be imposed if it is not acceptable, but somebody is trying to impose due to various reasons, then perhaps in long term it is not going to help. People will be having lots of conflicting ideas, situations and uh, they will not come up with something very constructive. So, the norms should be such that it should be acceptable to the members. Cohesiveness, this is very, very important. Cohesiveness refers to the bonding of group members or unity. There should be a feeling of union, feeling of attention for each other and desire to remain part of group. Many factors influence the amount of group cohesiveness, agreement on group goals, frequency of interaction, personal attractiveness, intergroup competition, favorable evolution, etcetera, etcetera. So, cohesiveness is such a thing which is very, very uh, important in group dynamics, because if there is a cohesiveness in the group, feeling of attraction for each other, sense of union, sense of unity that you are united. Yes, we are not doing for individual cause, but something we are doing for the cause of the group. And if that 
kind of thing motivation is there uh, in the mind of each and every group member then definitely it is going to help. Now, group processes decision making by a group is superior because group generates more information and knowledge generates diverse alternatives increases acceptance of a solution and increases legitimacy process also include communication conflict management and leadership. So, these are related to group process uh, uh, where the communication process one can say conflict management process is there and leadership means who will be the leader, how they will behave with each other. So, all these related to group process. Now, before I conclude I have already mentioned about uh, the group process and I can just go back and just uh, repeat one or two things which are very, very important which you have to keep in mind that the this cohesiveness, size of the group, these things are really very, very important. Uh, one should always try to keep in mind that uh, cohesiveness is very, very important in the group and size of the group and the communication and the uh, handling process so far as the conflicting situations are concerned. Generally people think that uh, there should not be any conflict. In fact, conflict is uh, inevitable, it cannot be avoided and uh, two people will never have the same kind of understanding at least in the beginning and that is good also. Because when people are discussing and coming up with some ideas, might be some new ideas, uh, then it is always there is a chance that one might come up with something better, something different which might be very useful for the organization, for the company, for the industry. So, always welcome if new ideas, it is not that uh, because of the ego problem and because, because of some other, other things uh, people's ideas are undermined, it should not be there. If something new, even the person might be junior, even the person might be new. But if he or she is saying something which is really good, which is really worth to be considered that always should be taken care. And if the group members take care of all these, then definitely uh, they will be in a better position to perform the given task. So, these are very, very important things. So, I have discussed a lot related to group dynamics and there are certain points which you have to keep in mind. But one thing is very, very important all through that uh, being a student of communication, I will re-emphasize that communication is playing again very, very important role. So, with this now I would like to conclude that it can be concluded that the group dynamics is essential to study because it helps to find how the relationship are made within the group and this is really something very challenging. Making relationship, oh my god, it is it's, it's not that easy. Breaking relationship, very simple, very easy. To break relationship, one or two words are enough, but to make relationship, it is very, very long process. And for each kind of building relationship, as I have already mentioned earlier in my earlier lecture, the role of communication, communication behavior and style is very, very important. So, uh, because it helps to find how the relationship are made within the group and how the forces act within the group members. This helps to recognize the formation of the group and also tells how the group should be organized, led and be promoted. So, these things are very, very important related to group dynamics, relationship, communications and formation and organization and how it can be, how it can be laid and how it can be promoted. So, group behavior is unique in nature. No, human behavior itself is a very complex behavior because uh, at times it becomes very difficult to guess what is going on in the mind of the person. So, we have to very careful because 
behavior, human nature and behavior is such a thing that uh, uh, <laughs> till yesterday somebody's behavior is very nice, but uh, one fine morning, next, next morning we find that he or she is uh, behaving in a very, very strange manner. And we are not able to understand what happened. Very, very complex. So, be very careful, we have to be very cautious. So, group behavior is unique in nature. In long term, groups not simply focus on the completion of a particular task in a specific time frame, but people would like to move from formal and superficial talk towards deeper and meaningful personal talk. Many times people say that yes, these, uh, uh, these things are quite important uh, in group that communication, but you know communication may be effective, may be successful, but one thing is very, very important. It should be meaningful and in fact, life should be meaningful. People say that life, life should be successful and communication is playing of course, very, very important role so far as the success is concerned. Because success and failure in life to a great extent depends on our communication behavior. Of course, there are many other factors, but no one can deny that success and failures largely depends on, on somebody's communication behavior. So, life one can make the life successful, one can achieve lot many things in their life through their hard work, through their uh, many other means but life should be meaningful. What is the meaning here? Meaningful life. Meaningful life means whether really we are able to enjoy our life or not. A person might be very successful, but unless and until if he is able to share that success with his or her family members, with friends, society, he is getting appreciation, he is really enjoying, life should not be burdened. Because sometimes in spite of achieving uh, lots of wealth, lots of prestige, position in the society, a person is not able to enjoy. So, to enjoy that, if a person is able to enjoy, then really, then only one can say that life is meaningful. There is a purpose in life and what is the purpose of life that we all want to become happy. And happiness is such a thing that perhaps it cannot come from this uh, materialistic achievement. To some extent, it may be very good to make our life uh, more comfortable, but to bring happiness within, we have to little bit, uh, I, I can say that uh, we, should, we should be little bit spiritual minded people think that what is the purpose of life, why are we here, why have we got, uh, got this human form of body, what is the objective, what is the purpose of this life. So, if you think little bit, then meaning to the life will come. So, in the group from these formal things, people we will go to formal and superficial talks, they go deeper and meaningful personal talk and they will have self disclosure. From formal, when people become informal, here I would uh, like to add from my personal experience that many times it happens that these informal discussions are more effective and powerful than the formal discussions. Whenever we are go going to have a meeting, many times it happens that some of the members discussed among themselves informally related to certain issues and come prepared. So, these things are really very, very important. What is going on before and after the meetings? How the people are some kind of some group of people are discussing among themselves. So, self disclosure, self disclosure generally said is a reciprocal. If I disclose something to somebody, it is expected that the other party is also disclosing. If I am disclosing some problem, some, I, some of my personal problem, some of my secrets, some of my uh, inner feelings to somebody, it is expected that the other party will also do the same thing. And if it is not done, then perhaps it is not happening in a proper way. It is not self-disclosure. 
So they will have self-disclosure and will also focus their talk on any tasks or objectives the group has in front of it. So through informal discussion many times it happens the lots of very important work done which generally are supposed to be done in formal groups. So in our life uh, it is quite it is very very important to understand also the informal meetings, informal uh, group discussion, uh, informal way of looking at the things because these things are really matters in group dynamics, informal meetings, informal discussion, self disclosure. So, these things are very, very important to achieve the formal goal, the prescribed goal, the task given because these, this is the human nature and behavior that once we start liking somebody, once we develop trust in somebody, once we have uh, certain respect somebody, regards for somebody and when we start giving regard and also getting regards, then things become quite easier and within a given time, within time frame work we can do, we can perform our duties, our task, our goal assigned to us. So, with these I would like to finish my topic on understanding group dynamics. So, friends during my previous lectures and today's lectures I have discussed so many things uh, related on various topics, uh, but finally I will end up that nothing can nothing can be better than sincerity and hard work, it cannot be replaced by anything and always we have to be very, very alert in our communication behavior and uh, making relationship, developing relationship and maintaining relationship to do or to achieve anything in our life. With these I would like to finish, thank you very, very much. Thank you very much.